To introduce Faraday's law, we will have to give some background information. Who was Faraday? What does his law state? How did Maxwell re-evaluate this? And how can this law be experimentally proved? When Faraday first experimented with electromagnetic induction, he wrapped two coils of wire around opposite ends of an iron ring with the assumption that when current flowed in a wire, a wave of some sort would travel through the ring and cause some sort of electrical effect in the coil on the other side. Upon activating the battery, the galvanometer quickly flickered to the right, but then returned to rest. It would not move again until Faraday was to halt the current, which caused the galvanometer to flicker in the opposite direction. This led Faraday to try other things, one of which being that he found if you slide a magnet into a coil of wire, the galvanometer would flicker once again. Upon further experimentation, he found that more coils, larger magnets, and the speed with which you introduce the magnet all increase or alter the intensity of the galvanometer's reaction. Pulling the magnet back out again, or using the opposite polarity of the magnet, will cause the galvanometer to flicker in the opposite direction. Any change in the magnetic flux of a coil of wire will cause a voltage, or EMF, to be induced in the coil. No matter how the change happens, a voltage will be produced. When an EMF is generated by a change in magnetic flux from Faraday's law, the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it produces a current whose magnetic field opposes the change which produces it. The induced magnetic field inside any loop of wire always acts to keep the magnetic flux in the loop constant. The Maxwell-Faraday equation is one of his four equations that link Faraday's law, which states that a time-varying magnetic field is always ac accompanied by a spatially varying non-conservative electric field, and vice versa. How do we prove that Faraday's law exists? Well, here we have a simple setup of an ammeter, a coil, and a magnet. So we're just going to take the magnet and run it through the coil. That will cause a change in flux, which will induce a current in the coil, which will be picked up by the ammeter just here. So as you can see, there's a current reading. What you can do as well is move the coil through the magnet, and they'll also cause a change in flux. And just if you're wondering, if the magnet is inside the coil stationary, obviously there's no change in flux, so there's no reading. Now, Faraday also concluded that the coil has a greater cross-sectional area, and the number of turns of the coil is greater, and there'll be a greater induced EMF. So moving on to the bigger coil now, we won't be needing the smaller ones. Anyway, moving on. I'm just going to grab the bar magnet and run it through this bigger coil right here. This will cause it will be a much greater induced EMF, and you can see the reading is a lot bigger than on the smaller coil. You can run the magnet through it faster. It causes a greater. Take another bar magnet and align the north and south poles together, which will basically just make one bigger, stronger magnet. And we'll just run that through it, and that is a much more bigger reading than the previous. We'll also find that if we align the north pole with the south pole of the magnet, the magnetic fields should cancel out, and the induced EMF should be very close to zero. Yeah, I'm just going to run it through it. Obviously, it won't completely. It won't be zero exactly because um, the magnetic fields don't completely cancel each other out. Faraday's law states that the EMF will be increased when the number of coils is increased, the cross-sectional area of the coil is increased, the magnetic field strength of the magnets is increased, the rate at which the magnetic flux changes is increased.